Mm. Yeah, so from your Financial Fun Friday team, welcome to Financial Fun Friday. And of course, we're being brought to you and sponsored by Affordable Benefit Solutions, where we're always bringing you what's new and more importantly, what's next in the financial world. So for those of you that are just joining us for the very first time, this is the Financial Fund Friday series is a webinar that we do at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the first and third Friday each and every month. And guess what? We're also broadcasting live simultaneously on Facebook. So welcome all of our Facebook watchers. And what we do during this broadcast is we just pull back the curtains so that you can get an in-depth understanding of not only your employer benefits, but also uh, some of the best retirement preferences operation options, financial tips, and strategies. And right now, this is normally our check-in time. Drop it in the chat box where you're watching us from. If you're on Facebook, drop it in and let us know where you're watching us from because we know you all join us from all across the country. So if you would like to join us live here on the broadcast, you can always register to be here where when you talk, guess what? We talk right back. You can register at RitaBRolandEvents.com. You can also like us and follow us on Facebook at Your AB Solutions. Just type it in the search bar and boop, we'll pop up. And of course, if you miss any episode, you can always go to our YouTube channel and follow us there. So Rita, as I'm going through this, when I get to the next page, I want you to tell me where they're checking in from. So the purpose of this series, you all, is just to help you understand your habits, your money, your spending habits. That's very important. We're going to jump into that today and then to support and offer you solutions that are going to enable you to reach your financial destination. So uh, before we jump into everything, Rita, where are they checking in from? I got my girl, Miss Alwanda from Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome. We got Miss Joan from Fort Washington. We have Cheryl from Texas. Online, we have Temple Hills, Maryland in the house. We got Upper Marlboro. We got DC. We got Delaware. So those are the ones that wasn't too shy to share where they coming from. Oh, <laughs> or my. even I just already knew. <laughs> That is wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining us from all over the country. And so when, before we get started with today's information, I just want to let you know that the information we're going to be sharing today, is going to be presented in a generic approach. So why do we do that? Without having individual knowledge of each and every viewer situation, we can't customize the information to you. So uh, we have to do this, as I say, in a generic approach. But what we can do is whenever you are, uh, you want to have this information customized, just reach out to us at 301-577-6340 and we can set up a date and time so that we can customize the information to you. So please accept this information as general in context and apply it where you feel it meets your particular situation. So thank you so much for understanding. And Rita, it's been you know a minute since we've been back but we couldn't have come back at a better time. Your Financial Fund Friday team are two powerful women. And guess what, you all? This is Women's History Month. Woo! So let's celebrate uh, National History Month for women. And as we jump into today's content, Rita, you know, when we think about women, one of the things that always come up is that, you know, we are so emotional. So being a life coach, and we're talking about money now, our money and our emotions. So being a life coach, can you sort of expand on how, you know, women are these emotional beings? How does our emotions impact our money and our decision making? You're on mute, Rita. That may help us, you know what I'm saying? That may just help you to hear what I'm about to say. <laughs> Absolutely. But when it comes to um, our, our money, we have a whole bunch of other things that we have to deal with money, right? But when it comes to our emotions, we tend to think, Darlene, that it's only about how we feel. Now, I study a lot but as a life coach, and my real purpose in that is to really show the impact of our emotions on our body. 
So whether you're sad, you're angry, you're bitter, you're unforgiven, those have a tendency to impact our organ, our bones, our blood, you know, so there's a lot going on. But we think about our mind, our mind is where we house stuff. And they talk about how they say 60 to 70 percent of most doctor visits come from stress. Now, they say up to 90, but I'm going to say 60 to 70 comes from stress related incident. So we talking about stress. That means our minds and our bodies are out of control. So if that is out of control, if your mind is out of control, how do you think that you can really operate your finances or anything with a clear mind if your mind is already out of control? So this just talks about stop letting your emotions ruin the way you manage your money. Now, if we think about the last 24 months, we've had what? A pandemic. <laughs> we had stay in the house order. We've had civil unrest. We had um, protests. We had inflation, we have market volatility. We have a lot of things that have gone on in the last 24 months that were out of our control. But many people were pre depressed. Many people said they just felt lonely. Many people just didn't know what was going on. Fear at all times, turn on the TV. They had a state of heightened. All of those things can really impact the way we think, the way we feel. And if it impacts the way we think, the impact starting the way we feel, what makes us think it won't impact the way we respond or operate our finances. So as we talk about it today, we're going to talk about our money. But Warren Buffett said something that was powerful. He said the greatest enemies of equity, of the equity investor are expenses and emotions. The greatest enemy. He didn't say the market. He didn't say this company. He didn't say the government. What he said was expenses and emotion, which says to me that we have much more control than we give ourselves credit for. We think everything about our finances is outside of us. What this is saying is what I truly believe that it has everything to do with us, how we spend our expenses and our emotions. And I remember going to a trainer and this guy, and it, it, this would never leave me. He said, life doesn't happen to you. Life doesn't happen for you. He said, life happens from you. So if life is happening from me, that means I have to be in a position to be able to control my life with what? A clear mind that I'm thinking properly, that I'm reacting properly. And this is all about what our emotions. So what I wanted to do is just start out with so we can understand what is emotion. One of the things I learned from my past and I think are so much to really understand what a word means, because what we think a word means is not always the truth, we don't really understand. So you think about emotion, it's, it is a social moving stare. A social means that this is something that's outside of us, an agitation. Guess what, it also means to stir up, to move out, to remove, to agitate. So a strong feeling, feeling, that's not anything that's factual, that's not anything that is true, that is a feeling, which means they could change in a minute. I could say boo and you jump, you had a feeling and then I can sing this melody, which I can't sing and you can be calm and we can do all that in a minute, right? So it is, so we need to understand what emotions are. And then it says here, I love this one here from the Webster's dictionary, it says a conscious mental reaction. And you know, when I first read it, Darlene, see that's what happened, you gotta really read. I was thinking like, that ain't conscious, but it didn't say a conscious thought. It said a conscious mental reaction. So how are we reacting? Is it anger? Is it fear? We're going to talk about that. And this subject experience is a strong feeling, usually directed towards a specific object and to typically accompanied by psychological and behavioral changes in the body. That's what emotions is. But what no one is really talking about is how that really is impacting what we do. So the aspect of consciousness means we're feeling our way through our finances as opposed to really thinking our way through. So does that make sense, everybody? Do you understand? Because once we understand what it is, then we can begin to control how we operate. Now, it says here, move this thing out of my way, it said we can't foresee or control the downturn or the upswings, right? What we can only control is our mindset our emotions and our financial choices. See, there are so many things, Darlene, that we can control. And emotions, like I said, is more than just about our feelings. It really is how do we control. And I have, I'm telling you, you're gonna be tested on this probably when you hang up. Yesterday, as I'm finished typing, I get a phone call, y'all. And this phone call was all hysterical crying. And their emotional feeling 
instantly put, what's going on? What's going on? And I thank the Holy Spirit. I know this is not church, y'all, but I thank it. It was like, so what you doing? So I had to really think about a thing, not feel a thing. And in that thinking, I was able to calm myself down. And then I was able to get them calm because I was able to use my consciousness and my thought pattern and thinking with a clear mind, not from this place where my heart is racing. And how do you operate if you are like this? So from being angry to guilt, emotions can shipwreck our finances. I heard out the decision. I made a lot of dumb mistakes, y'all, on, on what? Emotions. I bought a half a million dollar house in 2001 on emotions and, and on feelings. You know what I'm saying? I left that house on emotions, but no, that was intellect. Okay? When I had to sell it and they seen, I had to walk away from the thing that I wanted. But that because I use intellect, not my emotions. Shockingly, as much as 95% of our purchase choices are made subconsciously driven by our emotion. As little as 5% are based on logic. Let me hear y'all on Facebook, online. How many of you walked into the store to buy one thing and you left out with way more than you thought? Not just the grocery store. I had a, I had a real habit of going into Macy's to get some stockings. You know, a $5 order and I walked out with three four suits this wasn't one time it was on a regular and consistent base I got shoes you know you see it oh you like that I didn't check the pocketbook for real it, it was it something I truly need did I have a pair of black shoes or black suit already because we operate on emotions overconfidence can be a killer in fact research shows that more expense you have as an investor the more overconfident you tend to be and we're going to talk a lot more at the next one we're going to bring you some charts some statistics and some real stories about how is one lady who retired out did she retire with 7 million she was a, a school teacher or something 7 million dollars like double life and there was a guy who worked on wall street had everything he was end up broke and it wasn't because of the market it wasn't because of external thing it was because of how they saw it, how they thought about it, and how, how they felt. So let's look at some, some of these emotions. And so when we think about the feeling of how they can impact our financial decision, think about anger. Anger is that thing that we rise up, right? And if something happened to you, you got fight or flight mode, you mad about something, and you tend to make your choices based on anger. And sometimes what slips in with anger, Darlene, is pride. And pride won't let us admit that we wrong with something. So sometimes we go all full force or we feel this thing like somebody did something to us. And then we're going to go to the store and buy something because you mad at this person. You mad at your husband or something. We tend to spend when this anger on the other side of anger as a life coach. Some of the things we study was that anger leads to um, 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 where you want to be violent. You may want to hurt someone. And at the end of anger, sometimes it's death. On the other side of finances, on the end of that anger could be, how do we control ourselves when we anger? Some people eat, some people, you know, start throwing things, some people start to go spin things. So when you think about that, you wanna to begin to use a rational way of thinking. You may wanna breathe into through this thing. You wanna make sure that your stubbornness isn't going the wrong way, but stubbornness is making you look at things from a perspective that I have this budget, this is what I do, I have some investment goal. So stubbornness in a way that you're consistent with what you know to do and not what the feelings are leading you to do. Now, scare is manipulated through fear. Now, I just preached a few weeks ago that fear is a kingdom all by itself. Like it is designed to take us out. And so when you think about fear, how many people are afraid for women, especially women, we're gonna end up old and broke. Let me tell you, I thought about that. I wasn't married until I was 47. I don't have any children. That was my fear. It was like, who's going to take care of Rita? And so it's one thing to be fear about something where it causes you to move. But when you move, you want to move with your intellect and not with that flutter. Oh, I'm be scared. And you go about five long-term care policies or you're afraid because my mother died at 30. Four and mom going to die early. I had a million and five of insurance. And look, I had no children, but because she died, I wanted to make sure somebody had something. But was that rational thinking or was I operating out of fear? And Rita, one other thing I want to just jump in real quick because you mm -hmm. are on fire this morning when it talks about being scared, manipulated through fear. When it comes to our money, one of the biggest things I see happening um, a lot is what is called FOMO, fear of a missed opportunity. 
Mm-hmm. So oftentimes people will hear something or someone else is doing something that number one may not even be suited for you as an investor yeah. based on your temperament, but because Absolutely. you hear so many people saying, oh, I'm, I'm doing this. Oh, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. Then you become scared and like, I don't want to miss out. So I'm going to do it. And sometimes you could put yourself in an unhealthy financial position where you're exposed to more risk or you just simply don't know what you're doing and expose your own self to uh, find or, you know, potentially expose yourself to financial losses. So being scared, that's very real. But, you know, like we had a manager that used to always say, you need to be scared of the right thing. (laughs) <laughs> so, Donnie, that was go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you go ahead go ahead no great no that was for real like I was an entrepreneur by heart and every opportunity came by I was ready for it and I just remember one day in church my pastor said um every opportunity to make money ain't an opportunity for you and then you would think, you know, this is reader, like I should know, but it's like that day something hit me that everything isn't for me. And you should use fear can sometimes move you to move where you may have been stuck or you may not have been doing anything, but we have to take the fear and not move quickly, but move really with um, using our intellect and a strategic plan to get you to your desired goals. Whether and What do you use for those goals? Are you using someone to help you make those decisions? Now, guilt is something. Guilt is that internal feeling that goes against your standard. Some parents have worked so much, so they guilty to buy their children all the clothes, all the gadgets because they don't spend any time with them. Husbands and wives work so much, so they just want to buy their wife and their, you know, bomb cars and fancy purses and, you know, she wants this big house. I can't afford it, but I feel guilty because of this. Guilt has really taken us into some places. And I just want to read it. It says more, I, I read this thing um, a few weeks ago. It said people are more prone to guilt, are also more prone to altruism. And altruism, and I'm going to use this definition because it's easier for us to understand. It says behavior of an animal that benefits another as at our own expense. So sometimes we're gonna give people money that we can't afford to give. We may see somebody homeless and because you was homeless, every time you see a homeless person, you giving them money that you can't afford to give. Every time you see a child that, you know, whatever, you feel the need to give because of this guilt on the inside. And so we have to remember guilt don't belong to us. So we have to release those guilt. And you don't want to just be buying stuff just because you know someone or as a friend. Tell me, I teach a class called my top 10 mistakes in business. And a lot of those mistakes were made based on these emotional places that I was in. And as of last year, that cost was 3.4 million that over my 30, this is my 33rd year in business. Wow, darling, it's a long time. I made a lot of dumb mistakes. Yeah, praise the Lord for that, right? But yes, it's a yes. lot of mistakes that I operated on fear, on loss, on rejection, on pride, on abandonment. All those things can cause you to think inaccurate. And inaccurate thinking is going to lead you to inaccurate action. And those actions will impact your finances every time. And then, of course, you think about thankful. It allows you to see clearly because of gratitude. So it allows you to really operate from a new place. So not every emotion is a bad one. There's some ones about being thankful for what you have. And now after you being thankful, you can then look at this thing that you have excess and that excess would allow you to give in a healthy way that you can support your goals, your dreams, your family, your charity. And so you begin to look at your savings and know, okay, I've saved enough. So it's not always about when darling, we talk a lot about a budget. People just so afraid of a budget. We're not saying the budget is you can't eat or go out for the rest of your life. You can't, you know, go. I've had clients that have three thousand dollars, a thousand dollars a month saved for their vacation, but they got fifty dollars going into their savings account. You know, that's just a little bit scary for me that you're willing to give twelve thousand to your vacation, but only six hundred dollars to your say. Well, how are you going on a vacation? Because you only got six hundred dollars to spend for a twelve thousand dollar vacation. It don't even equal out. <laughs> so we just want to be grateful, but use that gratitude to be. You know, wake up every morning and say, well, "What are you grateful for?" And I believe if we can really be grateful for some things, darling, it'll help us to see things a little clearer. Because now I'm just grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful that I'm not in the war zone. I'm grateful. And then that gratefulness can allow you to stop and think. It's like, do I really need the stuff that I want? Because one of the things too, that we're not content with what we have because the word always talks about we're looking for something. We're always looking for something else. 
except for what we already have. Like, do you, like, I always tell myself, I'm not telling you that I always do it. Let me just be transparent here. To go shopping in my closet first. How many times have you gone shopping for something? You come back and like, oh, I already got that. I already got something similar to that. Oh, why did I get this? You forgot you had it. I went through some stuff the other day. I forgot I had that stuff. I forgot, like I had missed a whole crate of purses, right? I forgot about the person. Then I started looking at some boxes. Oh, here they go. So did I really need all that stuff? Because I, I forgot I had it. So just be careful. Peaceful is an undisturbed mind can focus and be thoughtful. So when you at peace, so yesterday I had to stop and breathe and I had that person to breathe with me. Just then I could feel myself totally at a different place. And when you can shift your thinking, you can shift your heart rate goes down. You now can operate what I say that we talk about all the time, Darlene is that we talk about the wisdom of the wow. And when you're in a peaceful state, you can use the wisdom of the wow. And the wisdom of the wow can teach us. What does it teach us? The spider teaches us the willing to sacrifice, the willingness to sacrifice. Because a spider, well, your spider, if you know, if he loses one of those legs, he, he can build a web. He'll grow it until it gets back to a place where he's whole again. So he is okay, patient to wait. You have to be patient for your next purchase. Think about where you are. Do you need it? Can you afford it? The next thing is the orangutan. It actually goes to a limb of a tree and it tests the, the, the weight of the limb to make sure it can bear its weight. What does that teach us? We need to have patience in making important decisions. So I just met with someone last night. She's trying to move. Her rent is $1,600. She's now paying $1,100. I say, well, pay $1,600 to your rent budget. Pay your rent 11 and put that $500 in the savings. If you can do that three to six months, it tells you that you may can afford to move. If you have to go in your savings to get it, that means you can't. The other thing we want to learn from a geese, a geese fly in organization. So the power of having your finances organized, you have a budget. You're looking at your, your actual financial statement, your, um, your net worth statement. You're looking at your things. You have them in order. Organization is critical because I talk to people every time and I was wondering, how much you have? I don't know know where is it at i can't remember what kind of insurance it is i don't know because we spend a lot of time on things that are not important but when it comes to our money we're not focused on it we don't even know where it is we don't know how much it is did it lose how much did it lose what is the interest rate those things are important for us to be organized and the last one is an ostrich and it's the power of working with others Sometimes solo ain't enough. You need a team of people that can help you. So whether you use us, we have lawyers, we have accountants, we have people that's strong in long-term care. We have a team of people that's an organization designed to help you reach your, your financial destination. So as we think about these finances, we're going to get a lot into the whole investing part next time. Just want you to understand that feelings are not just impacting your body. Because think about it, darling. Most of the time when we're mental, our mindset, emotional, is in our mind. That's the same mind you're using to make this financial decision. So if that mind is disturbed and emotional and in a right, wrong place, how can it even make a stable decision? Billy Graham said, our emotions can lie to us and we need to counter our emotions with the truth. And the truth, sometimes we don't always want to face the truth. And therein lies the problem because facing the truth sometimes makes us face ourselves. And what we don't want to have to face, Darlene, is ourselves. These last 10 years, family, look, I'm online. The whole world can know what I'm about to say. These last 10 years or 12 has been me really dealing with the reader. And all of the financial decisions I made over my life, a lot of them were emotional I'm dealing with that part of me that had to heal. And when that heals, everything around you heal. My body starts to heal. My finances start to heal. My relationship with people starts to heal because I'm healing those emotional places that kept me in a bad position. So just wanted to share that, you guys, as we think about this thing. The next time you want to buy, if you're in an emotional state, I ask you to stop, breathe, and ask yourself the questions. Begin to analyze what you're about to do so that you can make the right decision. So 
That is it. And darling, we're going to talk about some things that we're about to do. I just wanted you guys, hopefully, how did you guys feel? Put some FFFs in the chat box or on Facebook. Did this resonate with you? Um, do you understand it? Do you have any questions? Can you think about yourself and how you may have made some emotional decisions that may have impacted your life? And, you know, these parents and kids... That's where a lot of people make a lot of emotional mistakes with these kids and these parents. That relationship is a loving one, but it can be a draining one at the same time. At now, the very kids, same time. I don't mean just kids draining their parents. Sometimes parents can drain their kids. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a witness. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And whether it's planned or not. And see, it could be also emotional because you didn't plan or they didn't plan. Now those emotions are, tr are trickled down to you just because planning wasn't done, darling. Your mother's situation, she wasn't trifling. She loved you more than anything in this world. But because her lack of planning left you both in an emotional place and you had to make some emotional decisions. Absolutely, Rita. That is so true. And speaking of making um, decisions, we have some uh, information that is coming up. We have an upcoming event. Uh, and I'm so glad you went over all of this today, Rita, about our emotions and how different things play into the decisions we make, like anger, fear, uh, especially the guilt spending money on other people, you know, to our own detriment sometimes. And so that's why we here at Affordable Benefit Solutions and your Financial Fund Friday team, we are your community resources. And we're going to be hosting an event, uh, a movie premiere of the documentary, The Baby Boomer Dilemma. And some of those emotional decisions that we make put us in a financial dilemma. And this film here, it's going to explore uh, our retirement system, talking about pensions, 401ks, some of the uh, mistakes that were made, mistakes that we are making, but more importantly, things that we can do to rescue our own selves. So the movie premiere is gonna be, uh, that we're gonna have, it's gonna be March 17th this year at 6 p.m. Okay, for all of the early birds, I'm going to drop in the chat right now, Rita, I'm putting it in there, I just uh, put it in there, uh, the link to go and register and get more information, but we're going to host the movie screening at the AMC Magic Johnson Theater at the Capitol Center, is it the Capitol Center Arena? Capital Center Boulevard, but there's the information. AMC right Magic there. Johnson Capital Center. That's what it says. Magic Johnson. Ca Magic. You know where the new hospital is in Largo off of Medical Center Drive. And some of you, if you're old school, you remember Arena Drive. So it's right there in the old shopping center. That's yes. where it is. And you want to, we have limited seating, but guess what? The early bird gets the worm. So for those of you that register for the event and you get to the theater between 5.45 and 6 p.m., you're going to get a free concessions gift card courtesy of Affordable Benefit Solutions. So please click on the link, get more information, grab your seat while you can. All of the information that Rita went over today is going to resonate with you as you watch this film with us. So come on out and enjoy a night at the movies with your Fun Fire Friday team and Affordable Benefit Solutions. Okay. So as we always say, planning is bringing the future into the present so you can do something about it right now. Thank you so much, Mr. Allen Lakin, for giving us that wisdom. And that's what we're trying to do, just to help you plan now so that you can do something to have a better financial future and the one that you want. So we here at Affordable Benefit Solutions, we are a full service financial solutions firm. We can help you with your retirement planning, estate planning, whether you're just getting started or you are 15 minutes from walking out that door, we have a solution for you. All of your insurance needs, credit and debt, because now our credit and our debt are more, our debt load, especially in this environment that we're in, is affecting every part of our everyday life. So what's going to be right for you? Well, it depends because we're all an individual. So 
Contact us today so that we can help map out a strategy for who for you to help you put all the pieces together. So you can give us a call at 301-577-6340, your Financial Fund Friday team, and all of our team members at Affordable Benefit Solutions are, are here to assist you with your needs. So here we are. That's just a portion of our team, but we are ready willing and waiting to be of service to you and your family. So thank you, everyone. It has been another great episode. Do we have any questions, Rita, um, in the chat box? How is everyone doing? What did you think about the information? If you have any questions, because I see some of you are a little uh, shy, email us at fff at your AB Solutions Inc. with any questions that you have regarding this information. And guess what? If we pick your question to answer, you got a little something coming to you and we'll let you know on the next broadcast. Rita, do you have any closing okay. remarks? No, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming today and to really begin, if you do nothing else, if you learn nothing else from today, just begin as you get to make these decisions, not just in your finances, just in family. You know, sometimes what I've learned is just stop and breathe. And sometimes breathing, like when I just breathe, when I said that wasn't joke, it truly even put me in a calmer state. So sometimes if you could just stop and breathe, it allow you to think clearly. And if you're able to think clearly, you're then able to make a wiser decision because it's not based on your emotion that you really have put some logical thought to it. You use your consciousness to really think about it. And then in that space, you can then make some decision. For many, many of us, if we were to go back 20, 30, 40 years that we've been in here working and saving, what would our savings be? What would our investment be? What would it be for us had we really took control of our finances in a whole new way, not just in just we made money, we saved it, but really thought about it. So I just want you to be intentional because we don't know how long we're going to live. And so a good decision today can still change your life for the rest of your life. So I thank you guys. It's been a pleasure to come back. Um, we did enjoy ourselves, but we're truly blessed to be back here and that you're still here with us. We do not take that for granted. Absolutely. So thank you everyone for joining us and please be here for the next broadcast on uh, March the 18th. And when you come bring one, uh, we yes. had someone say, thank you, Rita. It was wonderful. We appreciate you, appreciate you all. As I said, click on the link to uh, get more information uh, on the baby boomer dilemma. You don't want to miss this screening. So thank you so much everyone for joining us and we will see you back here on the broadcast, March the 18th. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.